1 Corinthians chapter 15, put a marker there. But first we're going to read the gospel according to St. Luke chapter number 4. Beginning at verse number 1. And we stand for the reading of God's word. Thank God this evening for my wife being here. She did a fine job introducing me. I got to get that $20 back that I paid her to say all those good things about me. I like to thank the outreach for Christ and dancers and ministers for coming and being with us this evening. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number four. Beginning at verse number one, you will find these words recorded. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. The devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee. And the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He brought him to Jerusalem, sent him on the pinnacle of the temple, said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. If thou be who you say you are, cast yourself down. If thou be who you say you are, hit this blunt. If thou be who you say you are, drink this sword. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in their hands, they shall bear thee up, least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. When the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. There went out a fame of him through all the region round about. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, one verse, verse number 8. When you have it, say amen. amen. You will find these words recorded. And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. If you're not too mean this evening, why don't you just grab somebody by the hand? Grab them by the hand and just go ahead and squeeze that hand. Look them eyeball to eyeball and say, neighbor, God said you're scheduled to come out. That's my sign by the Spirit of God. Come on and clap your hands and give God some praise. Yeah, God said that you're scheduled to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're scheduled to come, to come out of that sickness. You, you're scheduled yeah, to yeah. come out of that drama. You, you, right. You're scheduled to come out. And if I got any parents in here, and if I got any grandparents in here this evening, why don't you just uh, repeat after me and say, My child, my child. Is, scheduled is scheduled to come out. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, it is once again with a humble heart and bow down head. And I come unto thee in the name which is above every name. The name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, use this dust this day. Speak through this dust this day. 
Teach through this dust this day. Preach through this dust this day all to the glory of my risen Savior. Father, I pray that the people will not be impressed by me, but blessed by thee. Yes. Father, I thank you for this yet another opportunity that you bless me with the feed the flock of God. Now, Father, you receive all of the praise. You receive all of the glory. You receive all of the honor for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. I'm scheduled to come out. My brothers and sisters, we must realize that God created time for man. Uh -huh. God created time for you and I. That God is outside of the realm of time. Yeah, th th there are two Greek words for time. One is chronos. Everybody say chronos. Chronos, chronos, that's the tick tock of the clock. That, that's man's time. That's our time. That's the time where we set dates so we would know dates and anniversaries and celebrations. But but then there's K Rocks. Everybody say K Rocks. K Rocks. Come on, y'all gonna help this boy out this evening. Somebody, y'all been here all week and I know you've got a praise down in your spirit. Somebody say K Rocks. K Rocks. K Rocks is that God kind of time. K Rocks is that defining moment in time. God has predestined uh, for you and I. Uh, my brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul put it this way. He said, and last of all, he was seen of me also as a one born out of due time. Yeah, out of all the things that Paul had did, Pastor, out of him killing Christians, persecuting the church, um, hailing men and women, locking them up in prison, God had on his divine calendar a chaos collision with Paul. Somebody say chaos. Yeah, yeah, that's what I call it, a chaos collision. Uh, and anybody who's ever had a real God experience, you've had a chaos collision. Somebody say chaos. Yeah, yeah, that chaos collision. You see, you see, you have to understand that why some of our prayers haven't been answered yet. Because it's not yet the appointed time. It's not the set time for your deliverance. It's not the set time for your child's deliverance. Because if God moved when we wanted God to move, it wouldn't have its maximum effectiveness. <laughs> Can I get a witness, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus? <laughs> the Bible says that <laughs> Jesus got word that Lazarus was sick. <laughs> Ah, uh, but he abode two days still in the place where he was. Now, my brothers and sisters, he arrives at Lazarus' tomb four days later. Lazarus is dead. And I would have you to know, according to Jewish tradition, the spirit of the soul would hover around the body. It would hover around the body for three days. They thought that Within three days, the body had a chance to resurrect itself. Oh, but look at our God. I heard the young people say, he may not come when you want, but he's always on time. Uh, the spirit would hover around, so look at God. He waited until the fourth day. See, God knew that if he had um, timed this thing just right, God would give the glory. I come by the Spirit of God to tell somebody, I know you're in a mess, and I know uh, you're in a situation right now, but God got you on his divine calendar that after you have exhausted all of your resources, yeah, after we have exhausted all of our resources, I heard the older saint say, hey, when it gets too hard for man, it's just right. Oh God. Somebody say, God gonna give the glory, baby. Just hold on. Yeah, text your neighbor and say, God gonna give the glory. Just hold on. Yeah, God gonna give the glory. Oh, Sky Ministries. Can I take you higher? Oh, can I take you higher? My brothers and sisters, in 1978, a Jewish rabbi by the name of Harold Kushner wrote a book entitled, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Uh, yeah, yeah, when, when bad things happen to good people. Oh my God. In the book, he deals with one of the principal problems of theodicy. Theodicy, theodicy, the, the age-old question of why. Uh, wow. 
Why, if God is so good that he would allow um, such bad things to happen to those of us who love him? Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, yeah. Why if God is so good, why would he allow such horrible things and bad things happen to those of us who, who have been faithful over a few things? Why would he allow such bad things to happen to those of us who come to church and pay our tithes and sow our seeds and try to raise up our children in the way that they should go? Why would God's loving nature, oh, would he allow such horrible things? things uh, to happen uh, to those of us uh, who love him. Uh, I stopped by Sky Ministries and I, and I wonder how many of you like Rabbi Kushner and the Patriarch Jacob of the Bible has had to wrestle with God uh, concerning life's choices. Yes, yes. I'm going to preach myself happy in a minute. Oh, just keep on living, baby. Just keep on living. Just keep on living. How many of you like Rabbi Kushner and the Patriarch Jacob of the Bible has had to wrestle with God concerning life's questions. All oh, the Sky Ministries, have you at least considered the remote possibility that the enemies drive towards your emotional, your mental, your spiritual, and even your physical demise just may have backfired on him? Yeah, with the devil meant for evil, God. Come on now. Meant for good. Yeah, that some of the stuff that has caused you to pray and stay up all night has had the spiritual impact to teach you how to fight. Hey, that has taught you how to war a good warfare. That has taught you how to do a hard thing. That's a good soldier. Hey, somebody said I'm scheduled to get out of this mess. Yeah, 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 I'm scheduled to get out of this mess. My brothers and sisters. I can't start in chapter 4. Most people would, but I can't. Because how many of you know that a text without a context is a pretext? Well, what do you mean, Hashton? I mean, it's sort of like going into the movies 20 and 30 minutes late. I'd rather just wait till the next one start. It's like when I'm at home and I'm watching a movie and my wife will come in about 30, 40 minutes late asking me a thousand questions. I'm the only one who can't go to my door and Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't start in chapter 4 because it's in chapters 2 and 3 that uh, uh, makes us appreciate chapter 4 even more. Chapters 2 and 3 gives us the backdrop of the story. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because in chapters 2 and 3, Luke the great physician, who's up under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, begins to write. And he starts out giving us the incarnation of Christ, then he gives us the confirmation of Christ, and then he gives us the temptation or the struggle of Christ. Can I take my time in here? Oh, uh, we're dating right now. We're going to get married in a minute. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He starts out giving us the incarnation of Christ, then he gives us the confirmation of Christ, and then the temptation or the struggle. Okay, break it down, Harrison. The incarnation, you know the incarnation, the virgin birth of my Lord. He starts out giving us the incarnation or you know, the virgin birth, but then he gives us the confirmation. Oh, come on, Scott Ministries, help me out. You know the confirmation of the Bible says that John the Baptist was baptizing in the Jordan River. He looked up and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taken away the sins of the world, who sues the not worthy to stoop down in the loose. The Bible says Jesus came to John and said, Listen, John, I want you to baptize me now. But you all wait a minute. What are you talking about? You want me to baptize you? I have need be to baptize me. Uh, the Bible said that he suffered his soul and baptized our Savior and straightway out of the water. The Bible says that the heavens were open and the Spirit of God descended on our Savior in the form of a dove and remained on him. And the voice from heaven spoke out and said, Wait a minute, I'm not a dead beat dad. This is my beloved son in whom. I am well pleased. Now wait a minute, Scott Ministries. 
That's confirmation. That's confirmation. Oh, my brothers and sisters, that's confirmation. How many of our young people would do better if they own? Come on, man. Let me put it to you like this. Jesus didn't heal the sick. Jesus didn't raise the dead. All right, I'm going to fix it up before you kick me out of here. <laughs> Jesus didn't heal the sick. Jesus didn't raise the dead. Jesus didn't feed 5,000. Jesus didn't raise Lazarus' daughter until after his father confirmed him. After his father confirmed him, past, he just went off and started healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding 5,000. Oh, how many of our young people would do better if they only had a father to confirm them? Oh, come on, that's me. Oh, that's the problem out here now. Our young people ain't got no daddies to confirm. You confirm that. I uh, see my brothers and sisters, you need a spiritual father. You need an earthly father to confirm you. The very fact that I'm standing in this pulpit at Sky Ministry at this time, at this day, is letting all of Bakery West Virginia know that Pastor Fruit has confirmed me. Get with you out here. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get this party started in a minute. Just hold on. Come on and go, go for a while with this boy. He goes from the incarnation to the confirmation. I am Sky Baptist. He does something that seems to me to be out of order. Luke, the great physician, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, begins to write the incarnation, the confirmation. But before he gets to the temptation or the struggle, he puts something in there that seems to me to be out of order. He inserts by the Spirit of God the genealogy of Christ. Come on, man. Go ahead. I gotta, I gotta teach it. I gotta teach it, then I preach it. He, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Pastor, uh, he inserts the genealogy of Christ before the temptation or the struggle. Why would the Spirit of God have Luke the great position insert the genealogy uh, between the current uh, confirmation and the temptation? Hmm. Seems to me to be out of order because if I would insert, uh, if I would insert the genealogy of Christ, it would be like Matthew did at the beginning. That seems to me to be the right place to insert. If you're going to talk about the genealogy of somebody, it seems to me you're going to talk about it in the beginning. Right. Oh, look at our God. He inserts the genealogy of Christ in between the confirmation and the struggle. Mm, now I'm going to let you chew on that a while. Then I'm going to come back and fix it up later. You ready to go to the Word of God? The Bible says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now wait a minute, Scott Baptist. You mean this Holy Spirit that I've always been taught that I had to have? You mean this Holy Ghost that helps me? Yes. Come on. Uh, you mean this Holy Ghost that comforts me? Yeah. Uh, you mean to tell me that this Holy Ghost would lead me into a wilderness? <laughs> would lead me into a struggle? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> The Bible says that being 40 days tempted of the devil. Now, Scott Baptist, you must realize that that 40 days is figurative. 40 days tempted with this same devil. My God, that 40 days is figurative. Because somebody in here, you've been tempted with that same devil, not 40 days, but 40 years. You've been tempted with that same devil for 10 years, for 20 years. That, that, that same devil. Look at this line 
enemy. Oh, somebody been dealing with this same devil. Devil of sickness. Devil of poverty. Devil of children tripping. Husband tripping. Job crazy. Money funny. Change strong. What do you mean? What it is. Tempted of this devil. Uh, somebody in here, you've been dealing with that devil, uh, dealing with that devil of molestation. Uh, uh, somebody touched you as a child that shouldn't have touched you. You're trying to praise over it. You're trying to shout it off. What it is? What it is? Tempted of the devil. The Bible says, and afterward, he was hungry. Somebody say, he was hungry. Brothers and sisters, the enemy will always attack us when we're hungry. Ah, uh, Pastor Fruit, uh, there are many young, beautiful, bright black brothers right now is locked up in southern regional. Why? Because they were hungry. Uh, many of our, our beautiful, young, bright black sisters are out here pregnant out of wedlock. Why? Because out. They were hungry. Ah, uh, you got husbands creeping on wives and wives creeping on husbands. Why? Say they're hungry. Uh, Y'all may not invite me back, but I got to preach it and teach it anyhow. Uh, they're hungry. Uh, look at here, look at here. My brothers and sisters, wait a minute here. I would have you to know that this is the beginning of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's ministry. He's around 30 years of age. At this present time, good God from Zion, he's around 30 years of age at this time. And the Bible says, and the devil said unto him, if thou be. Now look at this devil attacking our Savior early in his ministry. Early in his ministry. He's just 30 years old. But fast forward with me, Scott Baptist, down to the process of time. Go with me three and a half years later. He's hanging on the Gothas Mountain between two thieves. One thief said, wait a minute, we deserve to be here for what we've done. The other thief said, oh, if thou be who you say you are, get down and take us with you. Now look at this same devil that attacked him three and a half years earlier. The same devil is through this individual on Calvary's cross. Oh, good God from Zion. Oh, but look at our Savior. The Bible says, and the devil said unto him. Somebody said, and the devil said. Somebody said, and the devil said. Can I take your highest, Sky Baptist? By reading this text, you would think that Jesus is standing here and the devil is standing here. And they're looking at each other talking. Oh, but I beg to differ. Oh, how many of you know that God is a spirit? No man has seen God at any time. Oh, but the only begotten has declared him. How many of you know that the devil is a spirit? No man has seen the devil at any time. Oh, but the Bible says, and the devil said, what do you do when the thing you're struggling with begins to take on a voice, but you can't see? I, I'm feeding you meat tonight, baby. This is good. What do you do when the thing you're struggling with, all oh, years and years, you can't see, but, but it begins to speak to your mind. And, and the devil said, oh, I can't preach unless I've been through it. I know what I'm talking about. Oh, the devil said, what do you do, Sky Ministries, when you're struggling with something, but you can't see it, but it begins to speak to you? Go ahead and cuss him out. Go ahead and cuss her out. Go ahead. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and take that drink. Take that. Hit that. Go ahead. Go. And the devil said, huh? the Bible says, and the devil said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, command that this stone be made great. My brothers and sisters, good God from Zion, 
The stones in that day was from the mountains of Judea, and they assembled um, loaves of bread. They were made of flint and limestone. So if you would look at an actual stone, it would resemble a loaf of bread. And how many of us in here this evening has tried to turn stones into bread. Oh, what do you mean, Reverend Hairston? Let me Hairstonize it for you. You know you said if I just put his name in the prayer box and keep praying for him long enough, he'll come to church. Try to turn that stone into bread. Oh, fill it with some stones. Oh, but look at this. The Bible says in verse number five, and the devil in taking him. Somebody said the devil took him. What do you do, Sky Ministries, when the thing you're struggling with begins to speak to you? You can't see. It begins to speak to you, but then after that, it begins to lead to places. Oh, y'all not ready for this. I can see it right now. Everybody's looking bewildered for place, but I'm going to break it home in a minute. What do you do when the thing you're struggling with, you can't see, but it begins to speak? And then it begins to lead you and take you places that you wouldn't normally go. All right, come on now. Yes. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Can I get a witness? Right, yeah. I can't yeah. preach it unless I've been through it. <laughs> uh, it begins to take you places. You, you find yourself going places you wouldn't normally go. You find yourself doing things you wouldn't normally do. The Bible says, and the devil Oh, people are looking at you, thinking it's you, but it's really a spirit. Amen. Is this all right, Pastor? As long as I got your approval, I'm all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, yeah. People looking at you and saying, why is he doing that? Why is she going there? But oh, it's spirit. Oh, yeah. uh, Bible says. The devil taketh him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. In a moment of time, then this devil began to talk to him and said, All this power I'm going to give you and the glory of them, if only you fall down and worship me. Now, in the beginning of my message, I asked you, Why did Luke insert the genealogy of our Lord between the between the confirmation and the struggle or the temptation. My brothers and sisters is found right here in verse number 7. The Bible says for if thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. May I submit it to you this evening, Sky Baptist Ministries. Oh, that the devil know your family tree better than you do. Yeah, he knew that Jesus was from the root and offspring of David. He knew that David had a son by the name of Solomon. Oh, and Solomon went after strange gods. I'm going to help somebody here in a few minutes. Solomon went after strange gods. So the devil said, wait a minute. I got his great, 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 great granddad with this devil. With this Temptation. Oh, I tried on him. Oh, he thought he had put a generational curse on Jesus' earthly lineage. Oh, and the little did the devil know that he was dealing with the curse breaker. Oh, and I come to Scott Baptist this evening to tell somebody that the curse is broken over your life. No longer do you got to go through life dealing with your daddy's devil, dealing with your father's devil. Daddy was an alcoholic. I found myself taking a drink. Mama had cancer. I found myself being scared that I'm going to get killed. Oh, and I'm going to lose a life. I come from the spirit of God. The curse is broken over your life. The Bible says, church, good God from Zion, that he was dealing with the curse breaker. The devil didn't know because Jesus declared, I came in the volume of the book. It was written me. 
The God from Zion. The curse is broken. By the blood of Jesus. No more do I got to deal with that same devil I've been dealing with for years. Come to church Sunday after Sunday. Week after week. Going home. Dealing with the same devil. The curse is broken. The Bible says, church, in verse number 9, and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle. Oh, God, that is ministry. May I submit it to you. That's where the devil messed up. That's where he messed up, Pastor. It's when he took Jesus to Jerusalem. It's when he took Jesus to Back to the house of God. Oh, back to the house of God. Come to the scout ministry. So, to tell somebody that's for the enemy. Messed up in your life. It's when he lets you get back to the house of God. Put your neighbors in name of God. Can it kill me while they had the chance? But he stood up. Messed up. Can he get back to the house of God? Touch your neighbor. God gave me another chance. Now you can sit there if you want, or you can go to praise and hell. I say thank you, Lord, for another chance. I should have been dead, sleeping in the grave. But God gave me another chance. Can I do it in this house? God has been good to me. Is there anybody here that would praise God? If you should have lost it all, praise God. Did he give you another chance? Yes, he did. Is there anybody here that would praise God? That you should have lost your mind. But God gave you another chance. I love Jesus. The Bible says they hung him high, stretched him wide. I love him this evening because he hung on in there. Good God from Zion, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, hang on in there. He hung on in there, spit on his face, but he hung on in there. Broken body, but he hung on in there. Lied on, but he hung on in there. One reason he could hang on in there because he knew Sunday morning was coming. He knew he was scheduled to come out. And I come by Sky Ministry to tell somebody, hang on in there. I know you broke your heart, but hang on in there. I know the things you cry, but hang on in there. I know. Daddy, 